Hello, and welcome to another edition of Biology in a Minute. This is Ms. Feldbush. Making observations is one of the most important things you can do in science. A lot of observations can be made with the human eye, but sometimes we need to look at things smaller. In order to help us see things that are smaller, we have tools that are called microscopes. Today, I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about different types of microscopes that are used by biologists. Dissecting microscopes have the lowest resolution of the microscopes we're going to look at today. You need to use them to look at fairly large specimens. Here's an example of a flower. You can put the whole three-dimensional flower on the stage of the microscope and you can get a nice close-up view. If you need to zoom in a little closer and get inside the cells themselves, a compound light microscope is the way to go. In order to use a compound light microscope, you usually have to slice your, your specimens very thin. But as long as you can do that, the light can shine through and you can get a closer view of the inside of cells. Here you can see there are specific organelles inside the cell that you can see. So each of these little green blobs inside the cell is a chloroplast. If you wanted to zoom in even closer, maybe even see inside the chloroplast, you couldn't use a light microscope because the inside of the chloroplast is actually smaller than the wave of light that you would try to use. So instead you can use an electron microscope. A transmission electron microscope slices things really thin and then by shooting a beam of electrons through it, it can measure how the electrons are um, separated or diffracted. You actually have to use a computer to put the image back together, um, but after you do that, you can get inside and see individual structures inside the chloroplast. So here you can see individual stacks of thylakoid membranes forming grana. You can also use what's called a scanning electron microscope. Notice that the scanning electron microscope gives you a nice 3D image. Your sample has to be coated, usually with a fine layer of gold, and then placed inside a vacuum. This time, instead of bouncing through the sample, the electrons are bounced off of the sample. And because they bounce off in all directions, you get this really neat three-dimensional image. This is actually a close-up of the stigma, which was the reproductive structure in the center of that first flower that we looked at. Though it's not something we need to do in biology, scientists can zoom in even more to see individual atoms. This is a fairly new technology, but this is a picture that was made by IBM, and each of the dots that you see is an individual atom. They've actually animated these atoms, and they've made them into a movie. As you can see, there are a number of tools available to help you visualize things that are smaller than what you could usually see with the human eye. If you're using a light microscope, you can see things all the way down to the level of the cell. And if you want to see inside of the cell, there are electron microscopes, though that's not something that we would normally have in a high school biology lab. Whichever microscope you're using, I hope you can find one that will help you see your way to the next edition of Biology in a Minute.